Welcome back, everyone here at a Bronx Talk Stay. I got a very special video for you guys. We are going to be talking about five Yankees who didn't succeed in New York, didn't work out for them playing in the Big Apple for whatever reason. Um, so, yeah, let's get straight into it. So before the 2004 season, the Yankees acquired Javier Vasquez from the Expos. And he was supposed to be a really, really solid pitcher. And he did get off to a really good start with the Yankees and earned an all-star selection. And then it just went straight downhill from there. In the second half, he only won four games and pitched to a 6.92 ERA, uh, finished the season 14-10 and 10 with a 4.91 ERA, which is not absolutely abysmal, still not good. Um, and then in the 2004 playoffs, Vasquez pitched in three games and had an ERA of 9.25. And the Yankees then traded him away to Arizona uh, for Randy Johnson before the 2005 season. And, you know, then the Yankees decided they were going to try it again. And they reacquired um, Vasquez uh, in 2009. Um, he was going 15 and 10 with a 2.78 with the 2.87 ERA with the Braves and the Yankees reacquired him. And once again, for whatever reason, he came back to the Yankees and just could not handle New York um, in 2010, going 10 and 10 with a 5.32 ERA. Yeah, just one of those things. Uh, another guy, Sonny Gray, the Yankees acquired him at the 2017 trade deadline from the Oakland Athletics. And he finished third in Cy Young voting just two seasons prior. Uh, sounds a little bit like another trade that the Yankees just made recently. We'll see how that goes. And the Yankees were going to have control of him for two and a half years following the trade. He wasn't awful in 2017. He actually put together a pretty, pretty solid seat rest of the season with the Yankees. Although 2018 was a complete disaster. He pitched to a 4-9-0 ERA. He was moved to the bullpen later on in the season and then eventually left off the postseason roster. That is not at all what the Yankees envisioned for him. And it really just seemed like a New York thing for him. He blamed it on the Yankees saying that they made him throw too many breaking balls. Who knows? The next season, he was seventh in Cy Young voting with the Reds. So... It could have been a New York thing. It it could have just been the breaking balls. We don't know. But this is a very good pitcher. And New York was really the only place he just couldn't figure it out. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. And when they first got him, he was like, he was solid. I remember in, uh, I think it was game five or, yeah, I believe it was game five against the Astros 2017. He, he pitched a great game. I think got the Yanks to a 3-2 lead. Uh, in the series at the time. I don't know if it was game five. I do think it was. But, um, yeah, it just didn't work out from there. And they moved him in the bullpen. And he always, he always had really good stuff. It was just kind of unfortunate that it didn't work out. But it is what it is, I guess. And the next guy we got is Carl Pavano. And he might be one of the most hated Yankees ever. I mean, his story is just so frustrating for many Yankee fans. Um, so after a strong 2003 postseason, uh, which included holding the Yankees to one run over eight innings in game four of the World Series against the Yankees and an 18 and eight 2004 season, the Yankees decided to bring in Pavano in 2005. The Yankees signed Pavano to a four year, $40 million contract, um, and his time with the Yankees was not good. He was on the disabled list most of the time. Uh, and it seemed like he had a lack of determination to get back on the field, didn't sit well with the fans, and didn't sit well with his own teammates. Um, he was 9-8 and eight with a 5.00 ERA in four seasons uh, with the Yankees, and the Yanks basically paid a Pavano $4.5 million a win. So he paid him a, a decent amount of money, he paid him a lot of money, and he was hurt, and he was just a bad pitcher. And it just didn't work out for a guy, you know, that – was really, really, really good pitcher. I'm um, pitching some big postseason games, and it uh, unfortunately it didn't work out. It was just very, very upsetting story. It's a shame. Again, just one of those players that New York it just doesn't click with them. Now, when we thought of this video, when you clicked on this video, there's probably one guy that you thought of, especially in recent memory, and that's Joey Gallo. He was traded to the Yankees at the 
in the 2021 deadline. And it was a trade that a lot of Yankee fans were excited about. You know, everyone acknowledged his strikeout numbers, but he had been a really good hitter in the majors for a few a few years now. However, once he got to the Yankees, it just fell apart. 2021, his overall numbers with the Yankees, they weren't that bad because he had a hot streak uh, in the in the middle of all that. So his overall numbers weren't terrible. All the 2020, 2022 was, it's about as bad as it gets. 37 hits and 233 at-bats. And the amount of at-bats that ended in strikeouts, the amount of just uncompetitive at-bats that we saw from him, it was really, really bad. It was one of the one of the more frustrating Yankees, probably the most frustrating Yankee I've had to watch in my lifetime. He was awful. And his last days uh, before the trade deadline, before the Yankees shipped him off to the Dodgers, it was almost like a funeral. We had Gallo quotes coming out saying, how sad he was every time he looks at a Yankee cap, he's, he's going to feel that weighing on him. He, he's, he talked about not feeling safe walking out of his home, just walking in the streets of New York. So it was pretty much the ultimate couldn't handle the pressure of New York. Yeah. It's really unfortunate considering he grew up a big Yankee fan and, you know, it just really, really stinks. And I think, I think in another world, it definitely could have worked out. If he, you know, played well, um, and then the fans kind of got on his side, but it was just kind of really, really struggled. Um, and you know, he couldn't he couldn't handle the criticism. Um, and it was really unfortunate. And he kind of quit on the team. He was growing his beard right before he, he knew he was gonna get traded, and his at bats were just really, really bad. I really do feel bad for the guy. Um, he's with the twins now, so you know, I wish him the best of luck over there in Minnesota, but it's really, really unfortunate, and, you know, he said it's something he's going to have to live with for the rest of his life, and, you know, it really, really, really stinks, but, you know, I hope he can find, uh, you know, peace with it someday. Um, the next and final guy we got is Kiwe Ogawa, probably next to Pavano on the most hated, frustrated Yankee ever. Um, it was 2007, and the Yankees wanted to bring him in. He's a pitch. He was a pitcher. Um, so they shelled out $26 million in 2007 for the rights to negotiate with him and then signed him to a five-year $20 million contract. In 2007, Aguawa was 2-3 and three with a 6.25 ERA, and he had not appeared in a major league game since 2008. And he was so bad, you know, he was just, you know, he was just basically – rotting away in the minor leagues. He got sent down. He couldn't get back. Uh, he was in, in 2011, he was pitching in double A for the Trenton Thunder. And he was just not good. He was really bad, really good pitcher in Japan. And, you know, I don't know if it was necessarily a New York thing. I mean, it totally didn't work out here, but I don't even know if this guy was ready for the major leagues because he was just really, really bad. And once he, after 2008, he couldn't get back in a game. Um, so it's really unfortunate it didn't work out, but right up there with Pavano. 